It's all on video. There's a reason it's called the war on crime. For the next 60 minutes, we'll put you on the front line. You'll see the scariest pursuits, wildest shootouts, and most outrageous outlaws from around the world. Much of this footage has never been seen before. We've gathered these stories from police. What do we need to take him out here now? News agencies. Even citizens on patrol to show you the stark reality that criminals have declared you the enemy. And knowing your opponent is the only way this war will be won. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. Most people wouldn't dream of breaking into someone's home or pulling a gun on another person. But a few people who think crime is the answer cause us a lot of problems. That's why cops go out of their way to create problems for them. In Jerusalem, Israel, a holy war is about to see another skirmish. Two security guards from a nearby religious school are unknowingly being stalked by a terrorist who needs a new weapon. The old city is a major target for nefarious plots like these. As frightening as terrorism is in America, here, it's even worse. The instant their follower sees an opening, he sneaks up and makes a play for one of the men's pistols. Without hesitation, the disarmed guard pursues, committed to stopping this man at any cost. As they struggle past startled civilians, the security man takes a bullet from his own gun. His partner, Alex Sanilevich, tries to get a bead on the shooter. But he can't hit his mark. Alex leaves his injured comrade behind. Doing his part for his homeland safety is all that matters. There's no doubt this extremist has a target in mind if he can just slip away with that weapon. So there's no stopping until this is finished, one way or another. Locals flee from the fierce volleys as both men try for a kill shot. Even a child with a bicycle has to run for his life. Alex ditches an empty clip and reloads rapidly when suddenly, the hitman makes a break for it, dodging more flying lead. But in these narrow alleys, his hiding places soon disappear. Alex makes a sure hit from halfway down the street, and his target drops the weapon. But a wounded animal is a dangerous animal. When the man falls, he gets off a shot that ricochets right past Alex's head. The outlaw struggles to his feet, but can only stagger a few yards away before collapsing. Knowing the man could fire again, Alex cautiously moves in, and this time he makes sure the job is finished. Both sides in this treacherous world are so committed to their cause, they're willing to give up their lives. For the radical zealot, it's the cowardly desire to spread hatred and fear. But for the guards, it's the sworn duty to protect the innocent. By taking down terrorism, one assassin at a time. In Sun Valley, California, a cameraman pulls up to a breaking news event. 
a major accident on the freeway. But this story is just heating up. A man is trapped in the fiery vehicle. As Officer Paul Waymeyer tries to free him, Jeff Jensen fights the growing flames with an extinguisher. But they're losing the battle, and the driver is about to burn alive. The newsman hurries to a bus for help. Anybody have fire extinguisher? You guys have fire extinguisher? There's a guy burning inside the car. By the time he returns, the victim is succumbing to the smoke and flames. Witnesses have been trying to pull him out. But he's jammed tight inside the crushed car. And the fire is exploding out of control. Officer Waymeyer douses the engine block with the new extinguisher. But the flames are too high and spreading to the cabin. The man is roasting in a metal tomb. With the blaze devouring the floor and dashboard, the cops realize they may have to sacrifice the man's leg to save his life. The only tactic left is brute strength. With fire licking at the man's waist, Jensen and the volunteers yank him through the window. Just in time. In seconds, the sedan is a fully engaged inferno. You'll be fine, you'll be fine. You're right. You'll be fine. Hang on, hang on. Just agree. Firefighters arrive to put out the flames. And with the victim in the hands of rescue workers, he owes his life to the heroic determination of the cops and Good Samaritans. The reporter could tell this event was big news. But thanks to those who thought nothing of diving into the fire, this story was kept off the obituary pages. Jackson, Michigan. A police dash cam records the aftermath of a narcotics raid at a local motel. And sitting cuffed in the SUV that's using this dash cam is the meth maker they just nabbed after rousting him from bed. But as lawmen wrap up the investigation, the perp is feverishly trying to slip his cuff. And prove that this meth head can also cook up and escape. In seconds, the fiend is racing the souped up unit right onto the highway. Knowing the cops are scrambling to pursue, he heads to the shoulder and flies past unsuspecting drivers at over 100 miles an hour. A commuter in an SUV doesn't see the speed freak coming and nearly gets clobbered. As he hears police catching up, the thug blasts past the semi and wings an overpass. But by now, units are swarming from every direction and tightening their nets. One scores a direct hit with spike strips. The outlaw starts to lose control as he grinds rims into the concrete. Up ahead, officers have stopped traffic. Any sane man would hit the brakes. But this fearless menace is flying by the seat of his pants. even though he's not wearing any. The lead foot tries to split traffic and ends up with his butt in a sling. As the dislodged camera swings, cops bust the black skivvy bad guy again. The wasteoid's on his way to the hospital, but fortunately, no one else was seriously injured. Instead of chasing a high, 
This suspect sunk as low as he could go. And after this foolish high stakes run, he'll now be stripped of his freedom. Coming up on world's wildest police videos. A prisoner takes a mind-blowing dive into a cesspool of pain. A moto maniac tells cops to shove it. Stop that damn bike! So they push back with a vengeance. And a dunder-headed robber gets an early taste of the pen. Plus, a knife-wielding junkie snatches a girl and forces cops to slash negotiations. The standard size of a U.S. jail cell is about 50 square feet. In some countries, it may be even smaller, which means there's not a lot to do in here but think. And some of the thoughts these inmates come up with can blow your mind. Southern Mexico. It's impossible to know what's truly going on in this con's head, but it will prompt an insane act. The stir-crazy man appears to survey his tiny home and realize the only thing leaving this joint is what gets flushed down the toilet. And since he's in a crappy situation anyway, might as well take the plunge. The jailbird redefines hitting the head with a swan dive into the metal commode. If this was a death wish, it failed, which will leave him really down in the dumps. The battered inmate finally stirs, feeling more than a little pooped. A guard arrives, but he's not letting the numbskull out. Instead, he calls for a medic and possibly a plumber. This guy may have wanted attention, or he might have completely flipped his lid. But either way, he still wound up in the can. Blythewood, South Carolina. When Officer R.S. Ash first lit up this biker, he only wanted to cite him for expired tags. But like so many other motorcyclists, you better stop that damn bike. The crotch rocket jockey is determined to play the rebel. He's convinced his blazing two-wheeler will leave Officer Ash in his dust. Great shirt. But there's something this lone outlaw has forgotten. When you're fighting the man... Stop that bike before you kill us both. Stop that damn bike. You're not just fighting one man. Ash coordinates with other units ahead. Turning back left and maybe eight. And when an oncoming patrol car spots the renegade, he drops the hammer. The unit cuts off the not-so-easy rider, flipping him onto the concrete. Amazingly, he immediately pops to his feet. Get down on the ground right now! But officers help the wobbly man take a load off, then call for medical assistance. This hot dog thought a fast bike and a Hell's Angels attitude... Stop that bike before you kill us both. ...would free him from justice. Turn back left from aviation. But in the end, he was just a rebel. Without a clue. Sao Paulo, Brazil. The garage door entrance to this jewelry store makes it a wide open target for crooks to come cruising in. This petty thug pretends he has a gun and demands access to one of the cases. But when the shopkeeper hesitates, 
the thief gives himself a five-finger discount. But it's not what this perp takes that's important. It's what he leaves behind. The dunce was so focused on his brilliant scheme, he left a folder of paperwork on the counter. Witnesses soon discover it contains the criminal's name, address, and telephone number. The case is cracked. And as it turns out, so is the robber. He actually comes back, demanding the return of his property, knowing the evidence will get him locked up. And he's right. The clerk drops the security gate, trapping the man in a makeshift prison. And the office window is idiot-proof, too. He finds the folder, but still has to wait out his sentence. And his first visitor is a cop with a gun. This lame brain thought a gaping door would allow for an easy score. And an even easier escape. But by leaving behind a folder full of incrimination, this case became open and shut. Still to come on world's wildest police videos. An unstable man turns a park again! into an officer killing field. A drug runner tries to ditch cops About 100 miles an hour. by ditching himself in the drink. Oh my God. And okay, why are you nervous? I'm not. A late night traffic stop. Okay, is there any marijuana in that car? Goes completely to pot. What I said, I'm fucking Next. Our nation's border is a hotbed of criminal activity, requiring special units to combat all the chaos. From agents who patrol the highways to helicopters that dominate the air, this is a battleground where both sides play for keeps. McAllen, Texas. Border Patrol pursues a man reported to be running drugs in from Mexico. BP agent at the intersection, make a right turn right there, right turn. A chopper directs ground forces as it shadows his every move. Okay, BP, make your deck left, left, left. They know they have to nab this guy fast. He's coming right at you. Because he has an outrageous escape in mind. Southbound, uh, about 100 miles an hour. To keep cops from sending him up the river, he's going to beat them to it. The driver goes to the one place the American agents can't follow, making a real grand exit. All units, uh, we have a splash down. We have a splash down in the river. The cartels are willing to sink a truck and its cargo to protect the rest of their $25 billion per year industry. This perp even has a life jacket handy for just such an emergency. And he makes his way out of U.S. jurisdiction. Cops watch in frustration. But at least they kept his stash off our country streets. And they know what he looks like if he ever dares show his drug-running mug again. On another night, it will get even more aggravating for border lawmen. Using an infrared camera, they close in on a dope dealer with tons of incriminating evidence on board. But the pusher's route indicates an all-too-familiar plan. Get out of the U.S. 15 seconds. Come hell or high water. Damn. Oh, my God. Blast down. This guy seems to have forgotten his life preserver. Swimming? Yep, he's swimming. But he's not up the creek without a paddle. He's got help from the other side. That's the support team. 
The drug cartel support team. Yeah, they're coming across the boat. And they aren't here just to rescue him. They don't close when they hit the river. Seven bubbles. This time, they saved both the peddler and his shipment. Well, they scooped that up like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, they did. For now, these criminals have avoided the hook by recklessly cutting their losses. But the more they sink money into this venture and endanger their own lives, oh my God. the more likely their whole operation will go under. Kansas City, Missouri. Officer Eric Turner responds to a report of a vehicle that crashed into a tree. As he approaches the scene, he spots a suspicious lone pedestrian walking away. And no one at the accident. Turner suspects the guy he just passed was the driver. But he could never suspect the nightmare he's about to step into. Okay, he's stuck in here somewhere. I don't know where he's at. Backup officer Galen Dean McGinnis arrives to see the guy strolling into a park. Alerted to the situation, he goes to ask the man about his strange behavior. And the answer is deadly. Get a gun on him. I need help. Without a word, the culprit tries to turn cop killer. Turner arrives to see his partner dodge a furious spray of bullets. Both men return fire. And take refuge behind the squad car. You all right, Dean? Five, three, We're OK. He's down. We got him at gunpoint. He's been shot several times. The injured offender lies only a stone's throw away. He's still got that gun pointed at you, Dean. But police can't help him unless he releases his weapon. Drop the gun! Now he's got a gun in his right hand, fingers on the trigger. By nightfall, the homicidal man is still fighting a losing battle. Yeah. Unwrap your fingers from the gun! And ultimately, his stubbornness does him in as he dies from his wounds. The shooter was later found to have alcohol and drugs coursing through his veins. It may explain why he lashed out at the law. Get a gun on him. And instead of walking away with his hands on his head, I need help. Drop the gun. He chose to die with his finger on the trigger. He still got that gun pointed at you, Dean. Up next, on World's Wildest Police Video, a madman takes a flying leap at cops until they knock him back to earth. And car thieves get some smash mouth justice, followed by a gunshot chaser. Then later, a paranoid hostage taker learns they really are out to get him. Ohio. Patrolman Scott Knoll pulls up to a suspicious scene, a car creeping outside a high school. He tries to find out what the two men are doing, but they're not sticking around to chat. The suspects cut a wide U-turn, nearly sideswiping the cruiser. Officer Knoll alerts his department to the pursuit. I just had a vehicle try to ram me. Westbound on Cornell Road. The black Monte Carlo. And he soon learns why the pair is fleeing. The driver floors his hot wheels down a straightaway. Southbound at 100 miles an hour. Converging units are forced to hold off. Don't anybody pull out. He's trying to almost ram me. Trying to stop them at these speeds could be lethal. But when the renegades start to double back, <laughs> Officer Noel finally gets his shot. He 
T-bones the vehicle, shocking the wheel man. A second squad car tries to block in the bandit, but he floors it in reverse, taking dead aim at some cops. They're forced to take extreme action. A lawman jumps out and fires at the hoodlum. Incredibly, bullets don't phase these fugitives. The only other approach is to keep hammering their point home. As one prowler punches a slippery sedan, Sergeant Edward Sharon moves in and nails it. But when he rushes out to make the arrest, it's a truly deadly face-off. The outlaw lurches his car at Sharon, nearly running him over. Amazingly, Sharon holds his ground and strikes back. And that puts an end to the rampage. The passenger is okay, but the driver will later die from his wounds. Armed with a stolen muscle car, this thug tried to outrun the cops and then outmaneuver them. But police quickly had him outnumbered and put the brakes on his violent getaway. Nevada, Iowa. Police receive a report of a man running through a neighborhood with a knife. Officer Adam Fischels races to intercept the suspect. But this guy is not exactly trying to get away. Fischels has to hit the gas as the crazed attacker tries to slash his way through the door. Six or six, you see him chasing me? Officer Kalen Fitzgerald responds and spots the suspect on his buddy's case. But when he pulls in, the man tries the same stunt with him. It doesn't go nearly as well this time. He attempts once more to hurdle a cruiser, but gets kneecapped by the moving target. The suspect will recover, but it's later revealed that he has a mental illness which prompted this bizarre outburst. Cops will later drop the charges in favor of psychiatric care. After all, labeling this guy a master criminal would be quite a leap. Still ahead, on world's wildest police videos, a suicidal mother from hell takes her kid for the drop-off of a lifetime. And bank robbers hit the open road. He's flying. Twice. <laughs> Police officers are forced to see the harsh side of reality every day. And it's easy to get hardened to it. But the one thing cops will never tolerate is when people place children in dangerous situations. Milton, Georgia. Officers have just pulled this car over for speedy. Is there a reason why you're traveling 49 and 35? I think I was traveling. The driver, Monroe LeBeau, has his six-year-old son in the car. So where are you coming from? Taking my son up on the left of the program. At 8.30 at night, this doesn't seem like a good answer. Okay, why are you nervous? I'm not. And things are going to quickly unravel. Can you step in a car for me, please? I'm not down the road. Well, I got a strong odor of marijuana coming from inside a vehicle. As soon as the search is on, 
dad decides it's every man for himself. LeBeau knows there's 80,000 in cash and seven pounds of marijuana in his car. And he'll gladly trade his kid for his freedom. Unbelievably, just a couple hundred yards up the road, this daddy of the year dropout gets cornered trying to carjack another vehicle. For the car off. Now, this failure of a father will get more than a spanking. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, another child could be on the last ride of her life. The driver of this car is Dana Benton. When police came to his home on a domestic violence complaint, he took his violence to the streets with his fiance's eight-month-old daughter. Suddenly, the stepdad from hell pulls a shocking pit stop. Benton actually drops the baby out of the moving vehicle. The tumbling seat creates a human roadblock that forces officers to a halt. Remarkably, the infant is okay. The child is out of the car. The child is out of the car. But Benton will not be when he tries to avoid spikes and smashes into a cruiser. 10-4, he's rolled over, he hit the spikes, then rammed the sheriff's car. His car is on its side, with Benton in dire straits. Fortunately, the baby girl wasn't mangled alongside him. But that doesn't mean she won't be scarred. In Beijing, China, this is bad parenting at an all-time high. A woman's about to jump from a bridge with her child in her arms. Officer Jin Hai sees her from his motorcycle. And just as she starts to let go, he snags her, pulling mother and baby back from a killer plunge. But in her suicidal dementia, she refuses to release the railing. Thankfully, a passerby rushes in to help grabbing her legs. And a kind woman takes the frightened kid. Mom will later say that troubles at home made her want to end it all. But bringing her baby with her would have been the ultimate downfall. Nothing makes police work more stressful than a child in harm's way. Child is out of the car. But nothing makes the job more worthwhile than a child saved from danger. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Two bank robbers are headed for a major reckoning. It's flying. This is very dangerous. They hit triple-digit speeds as they race out of town. And with minimal cross traffic on these rural roads, he races right past that car. They're starting to think they might just get away. After all, they're already ahead of ground units by a country mile. Officers are way back down the road. But they're about to help them close the gap. Oh, he takes air. Losing control. No huge major crash into that tree. The road hides a downgrade, and the ground suddenly disappears beneath them, launching the car 110 feet through the air. They skid out on the dirt and slam headlong into a tree. Oh, a huge major crash into that tree. It's a catastrophic impact. The sedan has been chewed up and the driver spit out. I think that's him. You can see him moving around on the ground. As he goes limp, it takes police another 45 seconds to reach the accident. They hurry to clear the vehicle. OK, they've got guns drawn as they approach. But there's no threat from these suspects, who are lucky to survive. 
Robbing a bank may sound like a lucrative heist. He's flying. But it's never the payoff crooks think. Races right past that car. And when this foolish crime became a cross-country rally, he takes air. These thieves nearly dug their own grave. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. It's the insane story of a delusional drug fiend who threatens to carve up a young girl. And you won't want to miss how cops put this butcher on the chopping block. Next. SWAT was first created by the LAPD over 40 years ago as a critical backup to police on the street. Today, law enforcement agencies throughout the world employ this kind of special ops unit because situations requiring a tactical response can happen anywhere. Manila, Philippines. A man in the grips of a drug-fueled haze has launched an attack on the street. In his altered condition, he grabbed this 11-year-old girl and holds her at knife point. Confused and disoriented, the junkie threatens to stab the youngster in the heart. Police know the murderous menace could kill her with the slightest flinch. And he's growing more paranoid by the second. The crush of onlookers is only adding to the tension. Especially when one of them goes violently rogue. A vigilante sneaks to the end of the sidewalk and recklessly tries to dish a round of Wild West justice. But his attempt at being a hero triggers a panic. Police keep the foolish onlooker from shooting again as the unstable criminal rushes off, dragging the girl to a more secluded location. He holds up in a courtyard, but the closed spot soon has him feeling cornered and itching to strike. A hostage negotiator attempts a softer approach. They try to give him cash. And even a taxi for escape. But by now, there's no getting through to this maniac. Police have to act before he does the unthinkable to this little girl. But the thug has a clear view of threats coming from every angle. Except one. With the negotiator acting as a distraction, a sniper quietly climbs up to assess the situation from above. He knows if he makes a sound, or if the suspect catches sight of him, it might cost this girl her life. He has only one chance to end this safely. The marksman stealthily chooses his shot. In the chaos, the crowd doesn't know if the child has been injured or killed. It was close. She's in shock, but otherwise unharmed. And she'll never have to fear the sadistic kidnapper again. His wound is instantly fatal. When this lowlife took a young girl by force, foolish citizens took the law into their own hands. But stopping this cruelty was a job for the experts. <laughs> 
And this scumbag found out the hard way that if you live by the knife, you die by the bullet. The urge to go outside the law is a foolish impulse. Because anyone who thinks it through uh, we have a splash down. We'll know they're in a losing battle. And no matter how hard they push it, or how desperate they become, there are only two outcomes. Bad and worse. Keep there! Oh, losing control! A huge and major crash into that tree! 